Diego Maradona called this man the greatest dribbler he's ever seen, yet most of you won't have a clue who this guy is. Luckily for you, I've gone through the tape to show you his best footage and tell you guys the story of Jorge El Magico Gonzalez, the best player you've never heard of. A man who was doing drag back cancels in real life like he's got a magnet inside his foot. A man who was sending guys to boss man's corner shop to buy Fanta. Breaking ankles on football pitches that look like trenches from World War II. I was invited by FIFA to be at the best awards to exchange ball knowledge with some of football's biggest eye so now it's my job once a week in this classroom to pass on my expertise to you guys. To understand how Magico ended up getting pranked in hotel rooms by the great Diego Maradona, we have to start from the beginning. Get your pen and paper ready to make notes because our first football history lesson is about to begin. In 1975, Jorge Gonzalez began his professional career back home in El Salvador for Antel and then Independiente a year later. It was here that he already gained the nickname Mago for doing things with a football that had fans, opponents and even teammates baffled and bamboozled. Boozled. Despite bagging 39 goals in 63 games for CD Fass, it was the 1982 World Cup where a star was born. He single-handedly dragged a team of genuine farmers past Mexico in the qualifiers with his solo run that ended in an assist after his shot was saved. To further highlight just how unprepared this team was, the wall back home meant that they were only able to take 20 players to the World Cup just three days before the tournament began. They were on the receiving end of the heaviest defeat in World Cup finals history, getting dunked on 10-1 by Hungary. But as the fans walked home, there was only one name on everybody's lips, Magico Gonzalez. Now this is where the magic happens. So many European clubs were circling like sharks to acquire the services of Mr. Gonzalez. PSG were banging at his door like debt collectors trying to break in but they were not the financial powerhouses that we know of them today and he wasn't trying to deal with adjusting to a whole new language. Atleti were also desperate for his signature but Mago decided on second division Cadiz as his new home and so began a new love story. Within one friendly, the fans were hooked and his star became brighter and brighter as the season went on. This guy was something of an alien to these guys. How can someone move that fast yet still be in full control of the ball at all times? He didn't even look like a physical athlete, but once he stood you up 1v1, all you could do is pray. If he was playing today, he would have ended careers with the amount of TikTok and Twitter compilations of defenders getting chucked in an air fryer to get cooked. This guy played anywhere across the front three, scoring 14 goals in his first season to spearhead Cadiz back up into La Liga. The sheer variety of goals was staggering, from free kicks to volleys, from long shots to solo runs leaving defenders behind in the dust. How could anything possibly go wrong from here? Well, Magico, as he was now fondly referred to in Spain, was a big fan of the Spanish nightlife. So much so that David Vidal, his coach at the time, said he'd barely show up for training sessions for days on end. Bro was just living his best life and wasn't trying to be bothered by people training. But when you're this good, low-key you're completely justified to do whatever you want if you turn up on a match day to carry your team. But this next game was about to change his life. Here we have a match against Barcelona. Now as much as it's my job to entertain you guys, I'm here to educate on the facts as well. That means unfortunately putting an end to some wonderful urban mix. Everyone believes that Magico overslept because of a dodgy alarm before coming to save the day with a brace in the second half. But having done my research, the story isn't quite as wild as the legend suggests. He started both the home and away games that season from minute one and didn't win either game. But he did score in both matches and this goal in particular would go on to change his life. Jorge toyed with the Barcelona players like they were Cones, shifting gears like he's in a drag race in Need for Speed Underground 2. He brought out his famous La Culebra Macheteada, or in English, the Macheted Snake, a variation of Rivellino's Elastico that you would then see from Ronaldinho 20 years later. Maradona, who wasn't actually in the squad by the way, was watching on in disbelief. He immediately went to the higher ups of Barcelona and told him to bring this man at any cost, by hook or by crook. And as a result, Magico was invited to Barcelona's pre season tour of America in 1984. Diego Maradona linking up with Magico Gonzalez. Just the thought of this link up alone was enough to make people's mouth water like an XL bully dog seeing an innocent civilian minding their own business. This was the trial that would surely catapult Gonzalez into the galaxy of the greats. So what went wrong? To put it short, he loves women too much. Football was his first love and nobody could ever deny his passion for the game. But alongside that, he had an equal enjoyment for linking girls. Ultimately, it was to be his undoing. Noticing Magico's propensity for being late, Maradona himself played a prank by setting off the fire alarm. As everyone clambered out, one person was missing. 
Jorge Gonzalez. Maybe he was asleep or perhaps he was in the shower. Well, it was none of the above. He was just there casually posted up with a new woman who we can only assume was playing on the Atari games console with him. We all know how much of a menace Diego was off the pitch. But to deal with two of these in one team would have been like the Grim Reaper trying to look after Billy and Mandy, wreaking havoc everywhere. Barcelona coach at the time, Cesar Menotti, did not have the willpower to become a babysitter. And so despite their telepathic link up in this friendly game, this is the only footage of the two of them we get to see before Jorge returned to Cadiz. Despite being back at Cadiz, it didn't stop Diego going around and telling everyone that he finally found someone better than himself and even Pele. He was in awe of this guy, he was only two years older than him by the way. In today's age, we have guys gassing up Bruno Fernandes for stat padding all the penalties and treating the ball like a hot potato to inflate his chance creating stats. But this is a real number 10, unquantifiable by numbers. Although saying that, he still produced goals and assists like water. It was simply discipline and work ethic that stopped this wizard from joining a bigger club and being spoken about as an all-timer. But his goal was not to be rich or famous. It wasn't to be the best. It was just simply to have fun kicking ball. In 1985, they sent him on loan to Valladolid for one year to try and give him a wake-up call. But he quite simply just found new nightclubs and a new pool of women to chat to. Upon his return to Cadiz, he was now basically on a pay-as-you-go vibe. You don't play, you don't get paid. He was never one to be motivated by money. But as this was his only source of income, he of course buckled down and ended up having his greatest season, taking Cadiz to a record high of 12th. A finish that's still hasn't been surpassed even up to now in 2024. With over 200 games in all competitions and 72 goals, he cemented himself as a Cadiz legend and returned home to El Salvador in 1991 to see out his career in a country where he was now officially number one. So many players have suggested that if he was from Argentina or Brazil, he'd be on the Mount Rushmore of the greats. Pepe Mejias even said he's played against Maradona and Cruyff, but when asked about Magical, he said directly, a more complete player has never existed. Admittedly, this is a man who had 304 Cadiz appearances, so you must take that bias with a pinch of salt. But this footage speaks for itself. This is a man who was adored by the greats without even trying. Magical himself has said many times he does not like treating football like a job. He just plays for fun. He wasn't interested in all the accolades. In fact, decades later when attending awards for his footballing influence, this brother pulled up to the ceremony in jeans. Like when Aubameyang turned up to the African Player of the Year awards wearing Ferrari gang cap on his head. Only difference is that Aubameyang's luggage got lost so he had no choice. Jorge on the other hand was just a simple man who just wanted to wear what is comfortable in and had to be given a blazer to wear on the day. Overall, it's clear from this footage that he's one of the best dribblers and most talented players to ever kick a ball. But unfortunately, in a sport where winning is the objective, he doesn't have the accolades to create an all-timer legacy outside of El Salvador. But this should not be a sad story of what could have been. He did exactly what he set out to achieve from the very beginning. Having fun playing football and getting girls. Hopefully you guys learned something new today. If you did, then please leave a like and subscribe if you're new here. You guys have been loving the old school legends TikToks. So this is the first of many educational educational videos that I'll be dropping on players ranging from Garincha being overrated to real wingers like Sir Stanley Matthews. We'll be doing videos on what happened to players like Adriano and Bojan. So let me know in the comments what player you want to see next and we'll try to get these classes going every week to expand your ball knowledge. Have a wonderful week, class dismissed.